Hi guys and welcome to another Divi 4 WordPress theme tutorial. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Well, we're going to sort of continue on with our little theme of hiding divs and uh, placing divs where we want them. Today we're going to use a little bit of JavaScript to place a button and when you click on it, it's going to open up a div. Now you can use that for specials, you can use it for anything you want. But um, all this is going to show you is how to build the button and how to make it open up a div when you want it to do. So let's get started. First thing I'll do is enable the visual builder. And while that's happening, I'm going to go to my theme options. Don't need that tab open. And I'm going to delete all of the CSS that I've written for this. So we can start from scratch. Okay. I've got my visual builder enabled here. I'm going to go in. I'm going to hit the purple button button at the bottom and I'm going to use wireframe briefly because I've got a section here. Here's my hidden section. So I'm going to get rid of that section with those three blurbs in it. But just above, I've also got a row with my button in it. So I'm going to get rid of that one too. And if I go back to my desktop screen. There we go. I'll just save it and I'll just refresh. So we've definitely got a clean palette. Now for our code today, we're going to steal it from a place called W3 Schools. We've got a great website. It's just about anything you want to do coding wise. You can find a solution up here. I've used this in the past with my bootstrap one, bootstrap uh, demos. I'll put this link below the video so you can come here and use this. And literally, here's their example. If we go down and try it yourself, here it is. And what it's going to do, we've got a div there. And when you click on the button, it's going to close it open it. I'm going to start with mine hidden. So when you click on it, it'll open it. But that's the theory behind it. And it's only a bit of HTML. Don't really need to do any of that. We just need to give our div an actual ID. And then put this script in the JavaScript. These are the important bits. Okay, so let's get started. Let's go back to the site. And now I refreshed Let's add a section. I'm going to put it in between these two shop sections here. And in this section, I'm going to add, make it a regular section. I'm going to give it three columns and I'm going to put a blurb inside each column. And what I'll do is just select an image at random for each. It really doesn't matter. I'll pause this and put the other two in. So there we go. I've added another two blurbs and just made the background of the section purple there. Now this is the section that we're going to have hidden. So I'm going to give it a name. Now if we want to use the same one as they've used, we can call my div my div. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to copy my div. You can call it whatever you want, but for ease, I'm just going to call mine my div to keep it the same as what they were doing. So let's go to the section. Let's go to advanced CSS ID and classes. We want to put it under ID, not classes, ID. So this section has now got an ID of my div. So let's add our button. I'm going to go just above. I'm going to hit the green button to add a new row. Got a single column. And inside, I'm going to either use a code or a text. They'll both work. Work. I'm going to use text because this isn't a traditional button. It's a JavaScript button. I'm going to delete everything that's in there. And I'm going to go over to the W3 schools. And here's their button. I'm going to copy that button on click my function. Make sure you don't clip off any tags. 
Control C to copy. Let's go back to our site. I want to make sure you're on the text tab, not the visual tab. You want to make sure you're on the text tab and paste that code in. There we go, and there's that little button. Okay, so we've got, let's just save that. We've got the button, we've got the section. Now we need to make it work. And to do that, we need to add this JavaScript that they've got here. You need to add some script tags to it, or you can hit the try it yourself, which will take you to this page. And here it is within some script tags. So if we copy all of this from opening script tag to closing script tag, control C to copy, let's go back to our WordPress site here, our Divi site. And this time it doesn't really matter. I guess I'll put it on the bottom of the page. I'm just going to add another module. It's going to be a code module. There's a code module. I'm going to paste that JavaScript in there and that's it now we've got all three ingredients to make that work let's save our changes save the page changes and exit the visual builder let's go down and see if our buttons are going to work here's our div here's our button there we go as you can see that's what's underneath it disappears when we click the button great couple of things though I want it to be not there when we start off and I want to style this button to look a little better than that look a bit more like our site so first things first I'm using Google Chrome here if I right click and inspect we know we gave this section a class and we called it my div so let's write that I'll just double click copy control C it's an ID, so it needs a hashtag in front of it. Let's go to our theme options, to our custom CSS. I'll give it a title, which will be forward slash, star star forward slash. In between, I'll give it the title of hidden div. And down below, it was an ID, so it's a hashtag, and then paste, control V for the div name open and close some curly brackets and in between there I'm just going to say display none semicolon and that will hide this div save my changes go back to the page and refresh and the purple section should be gone when I refresh good fantastic we're just left with a button and when I click on it, it'll appear. Great. Now, because we've hidden it and it's displaying none, first click, you're going to have to click it twice. Every click after that, it'll be once because it's just flipping between display, not, display, not. So let's style this button now. Okay, so we need to give this a class so we can style it. So let's enable the Visual Builder again. When it's loaded, let's go to our little button right here, hit the little cog. And inside here, let's put, after my function here, just before that right pointy bracket, I'm going to write class equals a couple of inverted commas and I'm going to give it a name and I'll just call it H button H B T N for hide button so we can now target this with some custom CSS now if I flip back over to visual in this box here I want this button in the middle so I'm just going to simply select it and select align center just above there on visual box and that's a button in the middle there fantastic let's save that save our changes now exit the visual builder let's go to the button like I say I'm using Google Chrome so I'm going to right click and inspect and I'm going to write my code this way this is destructive, so if I hit the refresh after I've written this code, it'll 
put it all back to normal. Firstly, I want to find out what that purple color is. So let's click this a moment. Okay, get that color right there. Back to our button. Because I want the background to be that color. So I'm going to say background. Paste that color in there. Great, I want it to be a lot bigger than that. So let's give it some padding. Say 10 pink pixels top and bottom and 20 pixels left and right. That's a bit more like it. And I also want font size to be a bit bigger. So we'll say font size. Say 30 pixels, that's pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty big. I want it to be fairly big. And the color I want to be white. So I'm going to say color white, which is FFF. And last but not least, I think I'm going to give it some rounded corners. So we'll say border radius. Let's say 50 pixels, that'll be like a pill shaped button. Fantastic, great. So that's looking more like I want it now. We need to make this real. So I need to copy this code that I've just written here. Control C. And remember, we've given it our button a class, as you can see here from H button. So let's go back to our theme options. It's a class name, so a dot because it's a class. HBTN is the name of the class. Let's open and close some curly brackets. Paste in the code that we wrote here. And just before I save that, if I go back here and refresh, the button will go back to normal. Because like I say, it's non-destructive when you write it in the browser here. Once I save, Go back here and refresh that button should now be purple again okay the only other thing is I really wanted it to say something like special deals or today's specials so let's do that let's enable the visual builder to do that and we're pretty much done here I'm also going to take away any padding that I don't want from this actual button here I don't think there's too much on it, but the row and the section that it's in may have a bit of padding. Let's go into its row, which is the green one right here. Go into the cog. I'm going to go to the spacing. I'm going to put zeros in the margin and padding for top and bottom, just to make sure there's none there. That's good. That's, that's just exactly what I wanted. Now let's go into the module and change this text. Now the text right there I have to go into text mode, not visual, text mode again. And here's the text. Click me. See just after that pointy bracket right there and just before the closing button tag. So you can write anything you want there. Just make sure you don't lop off those tags. Well, may as well make it capital. Why not? There we go. Now the only other thing I did for a bit of fun was I gave it a hover effect and made it grow a little bit too. So let's do that. Let's go back to our theme options. And I'm going to take this class name and I'm going to do a quick hover effect. Control C. Let's drop down. Paste it in there. No space, colon, and then no space again hover don't put any spaces between the class the colon and the hover now open and close some curly brackets and what do I want it to do when you're hovering over it well I want the background to change to blue what else do I want to do I want it to 
increase in size. So I'm going to say transform. Transform. Then scale. Open and close some round brackets. And inside how much we want it to. Well, it's about half again. So 1.5 comma by 1.5 that's great let's see what we've got here save those changes oh we've got our visual builder enabled let's save our changes here exit the visual builder and refresh the page go down to our button now when I hover over it yeah now you see it's growing like that because we and it's turning blue because of the horror effect let's slow it down with a bit of transition duration let's say take three quarters of a second to do that or something like that so let's just add one more little bit of code here just a bit of fun Oh, 0.75 seconds that may be too long we can always change it save our changes let's go back to the site and refresh now when we hover over it there we go it's taking 0.75 seconds to transition between those two and when we click on it it'll open close open close and don't forget because we've got it hidden it's two clicks to open it initially I thought oh I can turn it into one but then I thought what do you do if you click on something and nothing happens you click on it again don't you so I think that's gonna work fine so there we are open close open. that is how to add a button with a bit of JavaScript to hide or reveal a div I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful if you have, please give it a thumbs up, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're interested in web development, take a look down below. We've got some great free web development courses down there. We've also got some premium courses with some huge discounts for our YouTube subscribers, so do check it out. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.